Hello, it's me again. Uh, pretty, uh, what's the word? Rough at the moment, as I always am uh, this time of the day. But my chips have arrived, so I'm just uh, refreshing the uh, thing here just to get chart. It may be that nobody joins this time of the day, but I'll just put the thing down, keep it on the chat, and continue nevertheless. So I'll just point you down there. I'm just refreshing uh, the chat window there and detaching it from the uh, on the Mac. There are the guys and gals. Right, got the video up. Just need to detach the chat. Yeah, you can see the, the chips uh, literally arrived uh, about an hour ago, actually. I had to wait an hour because I couldn't even see for the first hour. It's like I feel that off today. Vision's all blurred. Hang on. Pause that. Attach the chat. It's nice and sunny here again. What's it like where you are? Really nice weather. We had a bit of thunder last night here, which was no surprise because in the evening the temperature plummeted, it dropped considerably. And we'd had such a warm weather during the day, you know, you get that uh, contrast in the temperature there. You get thunder and lightning. Uh, anyway, let me think about this now. So what do I need to do? There's been a little preparation work with this one for sure. Um, let's just cut this off here. Okay. Crazy amounts of, uh, well, copious amounts of tape on the end of this. I just uh, touch like uh, switch socket here. There we go. Um, oh, it's crunched down. Look, you can see that. I hate it when people squish the end of these when they're trying to cut them. It's just widen it a bit. Oh, they've all come out. Look, I don't need that many. One, two. We just need two of these out for now. Uh, I'll just wheel over there, show you uh, the board before we start. Let's just see how it's behaving. Well, I know how it's behaving, but it'd be interesting to show you. Uh, but yeah, there's our new uh, HCT uh, 245s. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Yeah, it's Philips. So I've got some nice, uh, good branded Philips ICs. Let's wheel over the other side. Yeah, good morning, guys. Hi. Uh, uh, so uh, the board that's set out at the moment, this is the one I'm going to deal with first. It's the A-hole board. And you know what? It has been an A-hole already this morning. The first thing I did, switch it on. It booted up. And... Uh, I couldn't see the mouse cursor. I was moving the mouse all around. There was no cursor. I was like, where's the cursor gone? And then I right clicked and left clicked and I could see the little pop up menu appearing on the screen. I thought, I think it's that uh, up and down thing again. So uh, I tried power cycle it again. Lo and behold, the cursor was there. I started to move the mouse and I could move it down and left and right, but I couldn't move it back up. So you just get further and further down the screen. So I used, and I did this last time, this was what made, gave me a clue that the, it's, is the, uh, the shift register there. It could be, I thought it was a bad solder point, but I don't think it is. And I just pointed that down, sprayed it, powered it back on and off, and it worked fine. Now I found that same thing last time. So it is to do with the temperature again in here. It's, it's warmer, and the, either there's a bad connection, not on the register, the one on top there, that shift register on top is for the option uh, jumpers. The, hang on a sec. Hang on. Hang on, guys. Sorry about that, guys. The, uh, oh, my wife had a problem with the internet there. And, uh, yeah, she needs it. So, uh, what was it up to then? I also can't remember. Yeah, the bottom line is, what I need to do, I've ordered some more HCT two, uh, 166s, and later, it might be another stream, I don't know. I don't know if I dare do that on a stream. Remove the one that's on top, remove the one that's on the bottom, replace the one on the bottom, because that's the, the shift register used by the mouse, and then refit the other one, because this is a new chip here, and that one's fine, that one's for serializing the option jumpers. Anyway, so as you can see, we've got no drive. Uh, sorry, you might not be able to see that. We've got no drive connected at the moment. And this is the board with two of the BCT chips there, the A-hole board. And uh, if I point you at the screen, what I want to do is just show you on, how, how this is behaving with respect to uh, the pole in there. And if that's the right term, just a way to describe it. So if I count, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, about six or seven seconds. It waits before throwing up that. So we'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's about six seconds, isn't it? So that, that's not normal. The other board um, takes about 20 to 30 seconds. I mean, I could show you that, but it'll take me a few minutes to disconnect this one and wire that one up. But anyway, anybody who knows, anybody who's experienced with the A4000 will know that that's not normal behavior when you've not got uh, a drive connected. It should wait longer than that. Normally you have to stick the IDE terminator on there. Um, got one coming, but it's not arrived yet. Yeah, you have to stick an IDE terminator on there to, to do that, to cause that kind of behavior. Um, so, just to summarize, the little terminator you put on here, from what I can see, it pulls D0 and D1 on the data bus interface for the IDE around 4K7s. And that would give the behavior you were seeing here. But we haven't got a terminator on there. So it can only be these. So anyway, let's swap them and see what happens. I mean, we may find it doesn't solve it. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Can't be. I mean, it could be if I spent some time perhaps uh, scoping it, because we would see uh, some sort of level difference or something. But the, the, the really interesting thing with that is that um, they're not actually connected to anything, are they? They're floating. Um, but clearly, when the when these HC uh, BCT chips here are floating, they aren't floating the same as these are floating. You know, it's almost like it's. Get, the, the, I would guess because you need to pull D zero and D one low. I would guess that these, when they're floating, are kind of lower than the HCT ones would be. They might be pulled high. Does that make sense? There's, there's definitely a difference there. I think. But again, I could be wrong. Anyway, let's just connect the power to the camera here. Let's we'll rotate this around. And uh, I'll start by just uh, removing those two uh, chips. Hopefully won't be damaged, but they have been off before. So uh, I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. So I'll get a little bit of captain tape uh, around the things we want to protect here. I'll take a second. So despite the fact we're nowhere near this uh, area here, I think I'm just going to put a bit of capture tape over that anyway. Oop, throwing the capture tape around the room. Um, you may have just seen there the bits of keyboard uh, ribbon that I actually cut off that spectrum yesterday. Got it working. Um, I'll show you that. Yeah, so the keyboard on that spectrum is now working again. I did what I've been able to do in the past on the, yeah, I don't really need to worry too much about that there because, yeah, it's taped enough, I think. That should be all right. Um, yeah, you can see the bits here. This is the bigger bit. Can you see how large that is? The brake. I was looking at this on the camera going, is, is there a brake here or something? There isn't. It was right up here. It was right up here. But you can trim it off as a there. And you see this white thing? There's some of that white stuff on the, the rest of the ribbon. You can literally peel it off and you get exposed contacts like you've got uh, here. So I did that on both pieces. Um, the other side didn't need so much chopping off. It was just like a little bit like that on the bottom. Uh, and the, it is working again. Bear in mind though, it wouldn't suffer, it wouldn't uh, support more uh, being trimmed off it, you know. So it's one of those, the next time I connect the keyboard up is going to be after it's been recapped. So I don't really want to revisit that now until the capacitor kit arrives that spectrum. Um, and it'll just save me swapping the membrane out, won't it? But we may get some other parts of that spectrum yet. I'm not sure. I've had a look at, oh, I will be looking at the ZX Renew website. Uh, he's kindly offered to give me uh, a discount. Um, so from what I can gather, just having had, had a quick look at the ZX Renew website, he sells like uh, all the different cases you can get, different colours and different um, key, you, the actual rubber keys, you can get new, new ones of those, uh, transparent ones, rainbow coloured ones, white ones, blue ones, all sorts of different ones. Um, so I might do something like that and uh, spice that uh, spectrum up a bit, I don't know. Uh, I might try and keep it stuck. Um, so, hang on, let me just do what I sometimes forget. Let's just, just lift the board off the uh, ground a little bit. Let's just stick that there like that. Can you still see that? Mm, it's obscured a bit, isn't it? I'll tell you what, let me try and rotate the board a little bit. Yeah, there we go, that's not too bad, is it? The ambient temperature in here today, you know, the room temperature is, is pretty warm actually, but I get warmer as the day goes on. I haven't got my electric fire plugged in today, so <laughs> that is not a factor. 
Uh, but that was a fact the other day. This this is the board we were testing actually. This is the one where the IDE just didn't work at all. I'm like, what, what's going on with the IDE? Why is it not flashing? You know, the drive's not even look at the drive. Um, and I think, and again, I'm just guessing, we'll only know when we swap these over, but I'm guessing because of the, the difference, the way these are behaving as um, when the, in, you know, the red is inputs, kind of like um, pulled high or something. With the ambient temperature differences, I think the impedance change, because it was so warm in here, it really was, it was like, uh, you know, that fire was uh, making the room, I would say probably 20, 15, 20 degrees warmer than it was already, and it was already a really hot day. Uh, being in a conservatory, obviously, you know, you get lots of, uh, heat build up in here. It's like a greenhouse. So I'll start with uh, this one. I'm just trying to get uh, somehow get a little bit of support if I can on one side. There's lots of different approaches to doing this sort of thing. I've seen some people put lots and lots of flux on, but one of the things I will point out, when these have already been replaced, you get there's some flux there. You can't see it. But on the undersides and back of the pins, there'll be flux. When we pull this off, you'll see a load of flux on the underside. Uh, so that's one reason why I generally never add extra flux. But the uh, the other thing that uh, is a bit different to the way some people approach this, some people will just heat this up uh, for a good, you know, five, ten minutes or whatever, you know, the right temperature until it's completely free and then just push it off. I can see the flux bubbling from the underside there now. Um, Yeah, there's many ways of doing the same sort of thing. But I have found that if, you, if you're careful like this and take it off at the minute it's ready to come off without, you know, don't leave it, just wait for it to be ready, you're minimising uh, the heat where you can. I just hope we don't lose any pads. This side needs another go over. I can't really get any kind of grip onto it from that angle. I'll catch up with the comments and things in a minute. I just need to focus on this for the moment. Safe looks bubbling out from this side here where the tool was. There you go. I can see them going molten there on that side. I think. Let's just get the side of the go. Please don't break. It's coming up. It's coming up on that side, look. Come on, what are you doing? Why is it not coming off? There we go. Just got stuck there, look. There we go. So that one's off. Can you see all the flux there now? I don't know you can see that. It's spread out in the middle there. There's lots of flux. Um, so yeah, that's one reason why I won't always add uh, dedicated extra flux. Sounds like you have an orange march going past. Yeah, there is uh, someone whacking something with a sledgehammer nearby. You know what's amazing me about all this uh, lockdown stuff is how many people seem to be out and about considering there's a lockdown. Um, I've got a friend who works at a DIY centre and apparently they're selling more flowers and things than they've ever sold before you know it's like everyone's doing the gardens aren't they they're going out and getting strimmers and fertiliser and plants and things and it's like well how is that essential how is that <laughs> how is that an essential product it's not is it uh, anyway it's a bit of a difficult one though because you could argue what's essential actually some people are going off the rails aren't there nothing to do you've got to have mental uh, you know well-being while all this is going on and uh, if you can't go anywhere that's going to be uh, a big problem anyway let's just get that other one off as well what I should have done there is not stopped and waffled for a second and took advantage of the fact that this area of the board is still uh, relatively warm so fingers crossed we don't lose any pads here either let's just focus on 
the side. Focus on the side. I've got the feeling that this is going to make no difference whatsoever. And this is still going to be going six seconds and then throwing up the thing. I mean, I'm going to be horrified if it, if it is. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. There must be more going on than meets the eye in terms of the way it's polling. There might be multiple ways. What I mean is there might be multiple ways you can actually trick it into going, uh, there's no drive. It might not just depend on the two pins that get pulled with a terminator. Does that make sense? You know, you may find there's a, another pin or two there that nobody's realised that you could just pull one pin low, for example, on one of the signals there, and that has the same effect. Um, and what would that would what would that mean? Well, we'll have ruled these out. So if it behaves the same afterwards, it can only be one of those uh, gals there actually. But I think that's unlikely. I think that. If it was easy to do that, if it was easy to disable the thing, you know, uh, you know, disable the pole and really quit with uh, another signal there somewhere, probably someone would have already worked it out, perhaps. But maybe not. I don't know. Uh, if it is, and again, I'm speculating based on what I've seen of the pin out of the terminator. If it is D0 and D1 that gets pulled low, that on its own is just puzzling me a little bit as well. Is it maybe one of the first things that an IDE drive does is. Uh, respond with uh, a couple of lows on the on D0 and D1 maybe that's uh, the way the ID works on here is it's that's one of the way, things it's doing it's looking it's just continuously looking to see if uh, the first two bits go to a low state and if they do it goes oh we've uh, not got oh sorry high state we've got a drive if they go the first two bits go high we've got a drive it could be like a you know a bit of a cheat because the uh, there's going to be a you know obviously a proper protocol there and a series of things that happen when the drive gets initialized but sometimes with things like that it's quite hard it can be hard more difficult you might need more logic if you're going to try and do a proper handshake and follow all of those state changes on the different connections there whereas you could just literally pull the first two bits and go well, let's wait for high on the first two bits if those go high we've got a drive and then we start communicating with it properly it might be that simple I'm probably talking rubbish, but um, anyway, this is taking far longer than it should be doing. Let's just focus on this side a little bit. I think we're getting there. Please don't lose the pads. Yeah, it's coming off, I think. Oh, there we go. That's it. And yeah, pads look intact. Thank goodness for that. I'll catch up with the chat. Oh, that's not that's really handy. Uh, Stephen Lewis just said that I can go through the dete detection sequence for you. I think diagram has uh, it's in it. On the A twelve hundred detection sequence involves seeing a drive interrupt. Uh, your own method is best anyways until you find it isn't. That's true, yeah, you always, it's evolving. It's like, say, you look at my channel a year from now or six months from now, you may find them doing things completely different. Someone said here, I never go past 400 safe from our station. You say I always go to approximately 420, 418, 410. But, as I mentioned a number of times, uh, I'll point you at it. That ATA there, they're renowned for being inaccurate. So, you, we may find that actually I've set it to 420, and uh, if you've got a temp, you know, a thermocouple thing there and measure the temperature on it, 
it might be nearer to 400. It's, um, it's one of those things. So I've got uh, quite a few people joined there. Uh, Retro Game Revival, nice to see you again, Dennis. Uh, JD Deluxe, Dutch Retro Gamer, hello. Eddie Lurana, oh, nice to see you, my friend. Uh, they fly away easily. Uh, those diodes, oh yeah, okay, nice for that. David Webster, nice to see you from Australia. Technological, uh, lots and lots of people. Sorry if I missed your name there. Um, I'm just trying to catch up. Morgan, uh, Jamie Morgan from Morgan Just Games. Hi, Jamie. I watched your stream last night. It was really good. I was enjoying it. I had to go a little bit early because I was set to meet my friend Nathan and Colin um, just after 10. It was about 20 past 10, so I did have to drop out at that point. But I was uh, generally, we'll catch up later. Um, yeah, Jamie had some uh, good brand new, uh, you know, new homebrew releases for the C64 on his uh, channel last night. That was fun to watch. Uh, Right, let's just bring the braid in, I start cleaning up those pads, and then we'll get the other chips on. So, I don't know, I, I kind of, in terms of my optimism about this, I'm 50-50, I really am. I am not 100% sure, I've got a theory, is what I, th I think is going on here. Um, so it is a 50-50. But, in any case, you know what, I'll feel happier having swapped these chips for proper HCT chips. I, I, I really wouldn't want to leave them on. Knowing what I know, which is, uh, I'm trying to think now, is it? I think they are, uh, they're outputting, they've got TTL outputs, haven't they, these uh, blooming, or is it CMOS? I forget which now. Anyway, it's the, it's the opposite, we're flipping it. If it's TTL outputs, we're not swapping it, so it's CMOS or vice versa. I think it's CMOS actually we need on there. And those uh, BCT ones are TTL on both input and input. Because um, the thing is, it could cause compatibility with the drive. And Stephen or somebody, you know, decides to connect a, a normal IDE drive up to this, you may find one drive works and one doesn't. I mean, I think it's unlikely. The difference is subtle. You know, TTL and CMOS, there's an overlap there on the, uh, the in places on the thresholds, isn't there, for the high and low. But anyway, there is a difference in behaviour. Let's just see if this makes any difference to how it's behaving. See if it behaves itself now. Uh, and again, we could lose the pads at this point. It really depends on how well adhered they are on that. The more times you heat and remove something like this with hot air, the, it's like you lose some of the connection each time. You know, if you imagine, I don't know, let's say there's a million particles of epoxy or whatever holding that one pad down, each time you heat it, a number of those die from the heat, you know, the temperature changes and uh, pulling it and pressure and all the rest of it. So you can do this a finite number of times. You can move a chip a finite number of ch times on one of these boards like this. It's the same thing with the dip, you know, solder pads. It's not just with SMD stuff like this. You keep soldering and resoldering something over and over and over, the pads will give way eventually. Uh, I mean, if this uh, does work, the, the other thing I will do is obviously swap the one out on the other board as well. Uh, with that one, it's just one chip because one of them's okay. One of them is uh, with an intermittent uh, glitchy sort of, uh, you know, fault. So you pick out see from my fingers there. Yeah, that's looking okay. I will just clean the underneath of the middle part there with some IPA before we stick the uh, new chip on. Greetings from the Netherlands. Hi, Ventus. Dutch Retro Gamer. Hello. Hello again. HCT chips are high speed CMOS TTL. Yeah, it's like I say, you know, I could be wrong with this. We may find it behaves exactly the same and there's no difference. And then it's like, well, okay, maybe the HCT and BCT ones uh, are okay. Yeah, the BCT ones are okay, maybe. I'm not convinced right now. Someone uh, mentioned a blob of solder as well under one of these boards yesterday when I was filming. Uh, I'll show you the underside in a minute. I think it came off when I was cleaning it, I think. But these, they're not finished. Like I say, these boards aren't finished by any stretch of the imagination. Once you've got these main issues dealt with, and I think this is the last one apart from the, that mouse issue I told you about on the, uh, is this board? Yeah, the A board, the A hole board here. Once those are done, it's literally just me going around and cleaning up. And then at that point, I'll be inspecting it super close with magnification on both sides and all the areas uh, affected just to make sure I've not missed anything like blobs of solder and 
uh, bits of corrosion etc so uh, let's just get the new chip into position here Hang on a minute I'm gonna have to get ear cam for a sec while I, I can see it just while I try and micro adjust this a little bit it's not far off now actually that that straight yeah it's one of the easiest uh, Picasso isn't it I'm gonna be at it for ages trying to micro adjust it yeah I think that's as straight as I'm gonna get it it might not be 100% straight but yeah, it looks pretty good to me, so I'll just bring the solder in. And we'll touch the pad and not the pen. And correct. Oh, bugger. What I was trying to say is touch the pad and not the pen and not move it. And we moved it. Yeah, it needs to be a bit further this way. No, it doesn't. Now I have to go back up that way. You have to be careful when adjusting it that way because this is the point where you could lose pads if you're not careful. That's pretty straight. Let me just inspect it. Yeah, it could do. We're just moving that way a little. Yeah, that'll do. So I'll just uh, anchor a point on the other side. Yeah, just doing a sense check there, just to make sure I've got pin one. I'll lie the right way. Uh, for a minute there, I thought I had it the wrong way around. That's the sort of thing I would do on a live stream. So let's just get a crazy amount of solder on there. Let's be careful because I don't want to, you can't see it, you can just about see it here. I don't want to touch this with the iron. So I'm have to change my angle halfway uh, across here. Mm. You know, it's not easy to drag. Normally I probably would have just dragged across that, but because this parallel port thing. I've cleaned the solder off first, see if we can, there we go, pull that off. Um, yeah, because of the parallel port thing, I can't really do a drag. There's insufficient boom there. Is that looking all right? Yeah, that's looking all right. Just catch up in the chat a sec. BC, but BCT chips differ between manufacturers ever so slightly, uh, and it is enough to cause problems. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering you know, obviously there's lots of difference between chips in general anyway, like time and, you know, propagation time differences and things like that. Those are all factors. Uh, and I'll be honest, sometimes I can see the differences when I look at data sheets, and other times I look at the data sheets and I go, what the... And it was one of those. I was trying to compare, it's like trying to compare oranges and pears or something. I was like, looking at one data sheet, which made sense to me, and then comparing to the other data sheet, and you know what? I felt like I was lacking a PhD in data sheet reading or something. <laughs> it was that complex. That the, it was different. The, the way the data was represented was completely different. There was stuff on there that I don't even know what <laughs> what it was talking about. It may as well have been in uh, ancient Sumerian or something, you know. I'm sure someone like Stephen um, would have no issue deciphering some of that stuff and certainly you know people like Dave Jones, EVP blog, he's uh, so experienced at that sort of stuff. I think he's done a few videos on understanding data sheets actually and the 
cryptic differences between some of the manufacturers, the way they present the data. Just trying to get that extra solder from that side. I know you can't see it, but you'll be able to see the other chip in a minute when we go into that. going on there with those two pins. That's it. Bridge is removed. Far more soldering on that side than uh, was perhaps required. Let me just inspect that with magnification, so see if it looks alright. Yeah, hang on. Hard to see that. I'm out of the bridge between a few pins. Let's just check that. Yeah, we did. We had a bridge there. All right, let's uh, let's get that next one on. Flux on the thing there, it's uh, making it stick. Right, let me just inspect. We're not far off there, just move, need to move it up that way a little bit, I think, to near, near towards the Zorro slots. Or the, not really Zorro slot, but the thing where the Zorro uh, thing goes. You know what I'm talking about. straight. Uh, I think it is. It could perhaps just do with a tiny press there, maybe. Now that sort of looks a bit slanted now. Yeah, that'll do. It's not going to be perfectly straight. It's the thing, I can get these straighter off the screen um, because I can get slightly different views of the board and stuff where I can't get here because I'm restricted by the camera. Um, anyway, let's just try adding a bit of solder down there. There we go, that one's done. And we'll do the same thing uh, down here. Try and get the solder in that way. There we go. I didn't get the corner point, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a point is soldered. And then just press and reflow. I'm just going to move those old uh, BCT chips out of the way. Oh, it's exciting. Is it going to be any different? I bet it's not. I bet it's not. I bet I'm left with a issue somewhere or something for one reason or another you know you're able to trick it into that short polling thing there with a when you've got a gal issue when one of the pins is perhaps not as uh, can you see those chips now not as strong as it should be yeah sorry I moved around a little bit there didn't I? so let's get some uh, solder and I'll start with this side I always start with the side opposite the where I've anchored it otherwise the thing's going to wobble around isn't it does that make sense if I'd started where the anchor point was here I could just uh, shift it. So, is that alright? Yeah, that's looking okay. We've got a bridge there, I think. I can see it. Between those two pins. There we go. And I know you can't see the other side, but it's uh, it's just the same, really. You're just doing the same thing. It's had a bit more solder because I ain't got much solder on there. I can actually drag over that one. ZX Kim is uh, kindly manufacturing me a uh, fan thing for this, actually, you know, a, like a flux uh, fume extractor. Uh, so that's uh, going to be amazing. It looks fantastic, the job. 
is done. Just gonna get rid of the bridge. There we go. Just bob into them, make sure it's okay. Just gonna add a bit more flux there because I think I might still have the bridge. I hope to goodness these chips don't need to come off here again at any point. I can't imagine a situation where they would need to. I've definitely got a bridge there, I can see it. There we go, it's gone there. Sorry, you have to suffer my uh, ear. Just one or two of these, I'm not so sure about. That'll do. I think we're good there. I think we're good there. I'll be straight. Uh, I'm not 100% sure they're really aligned with each other perfectly. This one perhaps is a bit crooked. That one's nice and straight. Anyway, that'll do. Um, just catch up with the chat. Oh, thank you for that donation there, Craig uh, Reed. Very much appreciated. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Uh, just catching up, catching up, catching up. Uh, hit F5 again, try and refresh. Uh, okay. Finally, I haven't missed the whole thing for once. Retro Marky, hi Retro Marky. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been kidding because the last, uh, I don't know, three or four streams I've been doing, every time I do a stream, Retro Marky goes out <laughs> just before I do it or something, you know, to work or something important like that. Not to, uh, you know, not to parties and things. <laughs> yeah, don't get the wrong idea. Let's, uh, let's just get rid of these bits of stuff off here. Uh, should we clean that up now? I'll clean that up now, actually. Just because it's near the IDE thing then. Before you know it, I'm going to have flux over everything I'm touching on. It. <laughs> Easy or on, I love flux smoking in the morning. Uh, it wakes you up, that's for sure. So I'll clip most of this up this way. I perhaps won't give it a thorough clean here, we'll just go over to the cotton buds and wipe it dry and then I'll toothbrush it afterwards. So what are your thoughts? Is that going to make any difference to that polling baby there? Is it going to wait more than six seconds now? I don't know. Uh, uh, part of me, the optimistic part of my brain is going, yeah, it's got to be that. It, it, it makes sense that the Terminator, you know, that you get for these, it pulls a couple of pins down there. There's nothing else there. But the other side of me is saying, hang on a minute, there's probably more ways you can actually trick that pollen into failing sooner rather than later. And it might not just be dictated by the two pins that, you know, the Terminators usually deal with. It's, uh, so it is a 50-50, I don't know. I've got an optimistic view and a pessimistic view with this one. Uh, I think pessimism might win. It's, Anyway, it's got the right part on it now, hasn't it? That's the thing. Now I'm aware there is a difference. Uh, even if that isn't what's causing us our behaviour change, you know, it, it makes sense to have what should be on there. Especially with it being an interface. Right, that'll do for now. I'll go over the toothbrush after. I can see a big blob of flux in between those two there. You know, it's not going to come out without being brushed. So let's just peel that off. There's a bit of flux down there, look. Which is no surprise, it kind of leaks under. Uh, pull that off there. Right, let's wheel over to the mat and uh, give it a try. Before I do that, let me just have a quick, quick look. Make sure I ain't got any bridges. Yeah, it looks all right. There's still lots of flux around the pins. I can see that very clearly. Let me zoom out. Uh, just get the power. Just wheel you over there. Just bear with me. Blood down. Just the power supply. Start connecting things up. We don't actually need much here, do we? We don't need to connect the drive initially. We just want to power. We just want power. That's all. Power and video. So I've got no drive connected. I'll point you at the screen. Is it going to go up in flames? <laughs> uh, as always, first. Hit the power. See what happens. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, I think we're on something here. I think that's it. There you go. That was a clever bit of detective work, wasn't it? Yeah, that took longer. That's not seven seconds. That's normal. It is about, I say 30 seconds. It's not. It's like 20 to 30 seconds, isn't it? I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But yeah, there's, there's a difference. That is it. That is it. That's probably normal when I compare to the other one. Everyone says 30 seconds. It isn't 30 seconds. I don't think anybody's actually sat down and timed it. But what it isn't is six seconds. The six seconds thing is only what you get when you've got a Terminator on there. So that's it. And I think that that is also why this board suddenly stopped at one point booting from the hard disk at all. Because uh, the other thing uh, I didn't really explain about that, when that happened following that stream, I was like, oh no, now we've got an IDE fault again. I uh, I reflowed this chip here, retested it, made no difference at all. That was the only thing I could think it could be, the inside uh, of here, you know, the, the pins on that side. It didn't make a difference at all. And uh, I got my freezer spray and I freezed uh, the, these here, made no difference at all. I freezed these two chips here, switched it back on and ID it was working. And I, I know the chips are actually okay. Um, and I haven't seen it since. Um, and it's not been as warm as it was the other day. For one thing, I've not had the fire on the, adding an extra 20 degrees like I did the other day, have I? So I think that's it. I think this board, the, the ID side on this now, I think is going to be 100% in terms of reliability. So anyway, looking at the drive up, let's just make sure it's working. And I'd be hor horrified now if I found the ID didn't work after all this. Um, I'm just waiting just to see how long the black screen takes again. Yeah, it's way more than six seconds now. Still black. Right, it's come up. Anyway, let's switch that off. Plug the ID uh, back in here. Just inspect it from above. Uh, right, just keep your eye on the ID LED there. See what happens. Yeah, a little flash, flash there. Flash, flash, flash. It's booting. Put it with the screen. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Now, what would be interesting to see is how that may behave. Let me plug the mouse in. Let's see if this ball, the board has been an A-hole again. Um, so we've got the mouse in. So, let's see what happens. We can go left, right, down. Oh, and I can't go up again. Can't go up. I'll show you this. Uh, and it's not. It's not the connector. Hang on. Uh, what can I show you? Um, how can I show you? I can show you by holding it mid-air, can I? That's how I can do it. If I uh, find something, hang on, the book will do. Yeah, so I've got the mouse here, and I'll show you. You can move left and right. Can you see that? And if I go up, I mean, it's going, it's doing there. It wasn't a minute ago. It isn't the connector. Trust me, this board is intermittent, and it isn't the connector. Whenever it happens, as I explained again at the start of the stream, and this freezer spray is becoming, in, uh, it's becoming pretty uh, popular in this stream, isn't it? What I did is, when the up stopped working, I sp sprayed a bit of freezer on there. While it was on, and suddenly up was working again. So it is something to do with that. Anyway, I can deal with that separately. I'm not too worried about that. And the main thing is the IDE. Anyway, I'll stick you back up here again. Let's just launch something on this. And then we'll just go and swap that other chip on the board whilst this is just left on the test. Um, so I'll go into games one, AGA games four meg. Window view by name. Oh, hang on. View by name. I'm just going to leave kind of all the lesions going on. I quite like the music there, it's just to get a low level in the background. Sweet, that's working okay. This compact flashcard setup I've got on here as well, just to clarify something that was mentioned yesterday, it corrupted it, didn't it? It corrupted the drive, so I just rewrote it with a different, uh, you know, a different hard disk image. Um, so we're still using the same compact flashcard, so it didn't actually kill the compact flashcard, it just corrupted it. it. Like I say, it changed a read into a write, I think, because of me probing some pins there. Anyway, that's working, so let's just wheel over the other side of the room. We'll get the board off uh, this ESD bag here. 
just swap that one chip out on this and match up with messages and things. But I think we've certainly proven there, there is a difference with the, the BCT chips on these if you were to fit them. So don't, don't do that. something with the hammer. I missed uh, lots of chat there. I realised it was on the top chat instead of live chat. Someone said it's, the, it's an optical mouse and the surface is the issue. No, it's not. It's not. Trust me, it's not. It's this board. It's this board because it's like I say, you can be going up, down, up, down, up, down. It's not working. Up is not working. You spray it while you're moving up, down, suddenly it starts going up. It is definitely the, the shift register there and I know that because that is the only shift register that hasn't been swapped out. The other three have. The two on this board here, um, if I rotate this around, Stephen provided kindly three shift registers. This has got two brand new ones here. On the other board, I simply cleaned up and reflowed the one that was already in this position here because all the traces and things are all good around it and I tested it and thought actually it's all right, we don't need to worry about that. But it is, it's temperature sensitive. So, but it could be uh, the wire underneath, you know, because there's a couple of pins there, as I mentioned in the previous video. Uh, like the second one from top here and then this one and the next one, those like up and down. So, and they go to vias, I think, on the underside of it. So it could just be, to the temperature change there, the via is the, the issue. But one way or another, I'm gonna have to solve that. And I think the easy way is to, on that other one, to remove all the wires, remove the chip off the top and then remove that one and replace the, the shift register for the mouse there, actually. Um, so let's just flip this around. Uh, see if I can reuse these bits of tape. I've just stuck them down and all that. Um, which one is it? It's that one. Yeah, we don't need to worry so much about this one with the heat, actually, because uh, it's there. So, uh, let's uh, raise the board up. Where's my thing gone? I can't see the valve thing. There it is. Yeah, so this one's still got one of its original uh, Philips uh, chips there. Let's see if we can zoom you a little bit. Oops. Yeah, super close uh, this time. Yeah, it's this little blighter here we want to remove. But the interesting thing with this one, coming back to the thing about the Terminator, this chip here, we're, we're, we're meeting up here, this isn't the one that passes the D0 and D1 connections. Um, hence why this I think has still got a long uh, pole time, you know, of like 20 seconds or whatever it is, roughly 15, 20 seconds. Um, but the Terminators, when I tried adding Terminator resistors, this is the board I picked actually, because the chip there where D0 and D1 go through is still a HCT chip. And it didn't work. I couldn't get this to shorten its pole interval. And I think that the thing was confusing that is this one. I think whilst it's primarily, you know, the terminators deal with bits D0 and D1, I actually think the other bits are relevant. And I think that this chip here is pulling them the opposite way they need to be in order to trick it by just pulling D0 and D1 to ground. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I'm making any sense with some of the stuff I'm explaining, but. I think after this, a terminator would work on this, actually. Even just soldering resistors underneath like I did previously, I think would trick it into realising there's no drive. I mean, we're not really tricking it, are we? We're just telling it there's no drive, because there is no drive. That's the whole idea of that terminator. I'm sure there's going to be somebody out there who's going to come up with a bright idea of why don't you put BCTs back on it, actually, because then you've got the best of both worlds. But I, as I say, at some point, when we had a temp, when we got really warm in here, we stopped seeing the drive at all. And I think, I can't help but think, it's because um, at that initial stage there, when it's looking for the drive, um, a difference between BCT and HCT, I think, stops it working. Could be one of those chips is glitchy on that other board, I don't know. Anyway. I've uh, cleaned the Mega Drive up as well, you'll be pleased to know. I had a vacuum up in here yesterday afternoon, after the uh, stream. 
and the Mega Drive is looking super clean and tidy. There was a lot of uh, spider webs and things around it. There seriously was around the back of it. Let's just see if we can come in from this angle here. Very exciting, this is it. <laughs> Watching gadget solder or desolder. I'm heating up more than the borders. Yeah, we're pretty much there now, so I can see it starting to free up. Right? Yeah, that sounds all right. At least not losing any pads. Yeah, that one has been off there once or twice already as well, so yeah, we're quite okay with that. Yeah, I realise it's pretty blurry there. I can see that. The zoom on this camera is awful, isn't it? But I guess that's what I get for using a phone. Idiot Arana, what was the Heidi issue? dead or corrupt the compact flash card yeah I corrupted the compact flash card that was what happened with that compact flash card it didn't kill it by me probing a few things there I uh, simply corrupted it and that was by probing pins D0 and D1 on, this, on the ID connector there while the board was upside down when it was booted I'm, I'm guessing what happened was I maybe shorted one pin to something there and it interpreted the uh, a read you know, it was a, a read as a write or something like that because uh, the compact flash just got corrupted. I didn't have a backup of that exact compact flash image either, which is why we've got to that, gone to that sort of classic, uh, the one you've just seen. It's like classic workbench, isn't it, with a blue background. It's not got the uh, background image and all that sort of stuff. It's different. The one I was using to test actually is the one that you will get with the Terrible Fire 330 if you get one of those from. Uh, uh, super duper on Ami Bay. That was the uh, image we're using. The one I'm using now actually was the one that ships with some of the older uh, mods like the TF328, uh, I think. There we go. Flashcards have known issues and manufacturers using different uh, NAND process. Yeah, I know that I realise also obviously there's you can get compatibility issues. You might not find all compact flashcards work on a board like this. Um, some level of experimentation may be required. You know, if you ever get any kind of uh, mod or upgrade or board or whatever that's got an IDE interface and you try a compact flash, if it doesn't work, don't just give up. Try a different manufacturer. It's the same with SD cards as well, you know, I've read horror stories about certain SD cards not working with some of these um, mods and things you can get for these systems, like Everdrives for example. Um, for the most part the Everdrive is pretty, pretty compatible with any blooming SD cards you throw at it. But like I've seen, uh, you know, with the Super SD System 3 for example, certain SD cards might not work, but most 99.9% .9 do. So it's pretty rare for you to find one that won't work at all. The other thing I would say as well on the subject of SD cards, they're not all the blooming same in terms of uh, the quality of them either. You can buy what you think is a SanDisk SD card, and I've got a few of those now. And if I stick them, as an 8 gig ones, if I stick them in my camcorder, I can film fine for a few minutes, no problems, and then I start getting, and I've mentioned this on the video, I start getting a warning coming up saying, this uh, SD card uh, is not fast enough and cannot you know, keep up with the speed of the camera or something to the words of the, to, to that effect. Um, yeah, 
So despite the fact it's supposed to be a genuine Sanders car, yeah, it's not. It's a Chinese clone, isn't it? Or well, men, but not Chinese. Not fair to blame Chinese for things, is it? It could be uh, from Taiwan or uh, Korea or anywhere, really. It's a clone, though, nevertheless. Um, but those are the countries that manufacture them. That's why I'm mentioning those. Uh, anyway, so let's get another chip here. And try to solder that on. I'll adjust the camera in a sec, guys. Just give me a minute. Uh, yeah, again, it's perhaps not as straight as it could be, but it's as straight as I can get it for the moment, I think. Uh, you can just about see that. So I'll start that site. Again, I'm going to bob into it because the everything's in the way here. Two bars, just got a bridge pin or two here. There we go. Just inspect that. Yeah, it's looking alright. Let's do the other side and clean them both up. And we can test this one, obviously, then. actually because I got so much solder on that side there got three pins bridged together and while I could just keep you know removing the solder from the tip and dabbing it back in um, it's just far easier just to use a bit of braid actually there we go okay let me just inspect that yeah it looks all right Chris, I'm always at work when you do live streams. I can't watch. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. There's lots of people uh, out there doing good work, actually. Uh, people who are, are having to go into the office and stuff every day or into uh, somewhere, you know, their work location. I've got to thank all the people out there that are still able, well, having to do that. I was going to say able. We're all able, but some of us have got the, the benefit of being able to uh, work from home. Others haven't. So yeah, major kudos to those people out there doing that. Not just the NHS, but I'm talking about like the the police, uh, garbage, uh, you know, uh, waste collection services, um, all of the people out there that are having to go and work. Really, people in uh, warehouses and things as well, you know, and uh, lorry drivers delivering stuff. There's so many of those people we've got to thank for keeping things going. The essential services like delivery of food and goods and stuff. I bet home shopping's gone up considerably since the start of this. And I'm not just talking about food, I'm talking about like, you know, DVDs and games. I'm assuming those things are still delivering, I don't know. I haven't even looked. So, 
So again, I'll clean up with the toothbrush in a minute, but we'll just wheel over and just see if that board is uh, working as well. Table fire, yeah, really, I just want a template to fit standard case. Uh, I meant to just put a 4,000 modern case. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, thanks for that, Stephen. I can just... Looks like Stephen's investigating case mods and things for me. That's uh, really helpful. Because I'm not really sure what I would fit it in. Um, probably have to do welding or something, I would think, to fit this into any, you know, alternative kind of case. Let's just stick that on the uh, mat there for a second while I just disconnect this. I've got to clean both boards up. I'm not really sure what we'll do after that. I might take a break and come back later if I'm going to do anything else. I don't know. We might have a quick look at that Spectrum. Uh, I can show you it working again, but the, the future is 8-bit cart is intermittent on that board, and I still don't really know why. Got a couple of those pieces of that Spectrum keyboard membrane on there, look. Can you see that? They <laughs> were floating at the back of the board. Must have had them on the mat a minute ago and somehow transferred them to the board. Um, anyway, I'll give you a quick quick look at that. We need to obviously clean with IPA. But, and then, is that one? That's not quite as straight, is it? Yeah, they're, they're not bad. They're not bad. One of them's off by about half a degree or something. This is the thing, though. Uh, but it isn't really that. Um, it's just cosmetic at the end of the day. If you get it pretty close, you can see all the pads are well aligned, so that's all that's important. Um, let's get rid of a piece of captain tape off there as well. So again, we'll try it without the ID initially, I think. So I think we've got enough there to try that. Uh, point at the screen. Can you see the Mega Drive now, look? It's super clean. There might be a particle of dust. I've got hair there, look. And a bit of dust but yeah and this is scratched up already there's always been a scratch on that but in general they look nice and clean now uh, oh it's not there hang on so let's power it on one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, I'm seeing the difference, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I'm looking at the board now, just in case anything crazy is going on here. Because um, that's a long time, isn't it? That's like 60 seconds, <laughs> it's not like 30 seconds. There we go, so, oh, I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is the other board is behaving very different since we've changed those chips over. This board takes an incredible amount of time to look for the drive, so I don't know. <laughs> there is still a difference between these two boards. The only thing that's different here is this has got one of its original uh, Philips HCT chips on the board there. So I'll just try that again. But I'm guessing it is, it's nearer to 60 seconds on this one, isn't it? It is absolutely bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. But doing what we did to let the board has made a difference, definitely. It's more than doubled the amount of time it's actually looking for the drive. But that ain't 15 or 16 seconds like it is on the other board, is it? It's over 30. It must be getting on for 60. Yeah, anyway. We'll connect, uh, I won't show you, but I'll connect the drive up and we'll just see if this one boosts as well now. So I think that difference has to be the difference in the uh, gals, actually. Like one of them's got a slightly weaker uh, connection on one of its signals or something. I don't know what else it could be, uh, unless the uh, 245 on this one, maybe it needs swapping out. Maybe if I swapped the other 245 on this one for a brand new HCT 245, things would. Uh, be different I don't know there's no RAM on this board but that's normal it's normal error yeah it's only got two meg uh, sim anyway we'll go clean those up so there is still a difference what do you think <laughs> what do you think's the cause of that that uh, difference in polling time it's crazy absolutely crazy Yeah, so I'll take both boards over there, I think, now, actually, if I can. Might need to just uh, point you somewhere, silly, while I just uh, try and grab both boards. Let's 
ce qu'on sent bien. In Urala, 30 and 38 without terminus. I'm not sure what you mean by 30 and 38 without terminus. You mean pins 30 and 38, you mean 30 seconds without terminus, and you timed it roughly there. So, yeah, I'm guessing you mean seconds. Someone's put there, oh, hang on, version 3 versus 3.1 is a huge difference. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the difference, actually. So uh, we're on the right tracks. We have what we needed to do today, as you saw on the other board, the one where we saw both of these, that has made a big difference. It's not no longer after six seconds giving up and, uh, you know, coming up with the uh, workbench, uh, workbench uh, thing, screen. Uh, so that is definitely, you know, what we've learned from this. The reason this board doesn't take exactly the same amount of time, this one's got, which one's this one got? This one's got Kickstart 3.1. This takes longer, actually. Is that what you were expecting, Stephen? Kickstart 3.1 to take longer than Kickstart 3. Please, uh, anybody else got experience in that, please post below. Maybe it, it waits longer to be more tolerant, so maybe that's... Someone's put yes, I think. Yep. Yeah, so there we go. That's the difference, then. Uh, I mean, I guess if I was... Uh, if we really wanted to, we could take the, switch the Kickstart ROMs around and test like for like on each board. That would be uh, conclusive, wouldn't it? I think we should maybe do that, actually. This is the, the one we've just tested here with one chip. Let's do that. Let's put the Kickstart ROMs from the other one on this one. And I think we estimated around 14 or 15 or 16 seconds, I think, when we were timing it before. You know, I wasn't using a stopwatch there, so I'm not 100% accurate, but it was not the 30 or so seconds we've just seen with Kickstart 3.1. So we'll do that. We'll clean this up. Let's just go over there and retry it. I mean, the thing is, you know, I'm learning so much by doing these. This is, you know, I'm sure you're gathered by now. That's my approach, is I make lots of mistakes and I question lots of things and people provide lots of advice and tips and things. And my knowledge increases uh, exponentially, you know, as these things, uh, as I make progress with these things. By the time I get to my third or fourth uh, A4000 repair, I'll start getting good at repairing them. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I know what that is, I know what this is, etc., etc. So you've added a volume of uh, faults in different areas of the board. Some of this stuff is discovery. You know, what I'm doing here is a bit of discovery work, learning and feeling my way around the, the board, learning about it, learning about the difference between uh, how, you know, different kickstart ROMs behave. So let's, uh, where's my screwdriver? Let's get the CPU card off here. And we'll remove kickstart. Just borrow the ones off the other board. Doesn't really matter which way these round these are for the moment, really. I just wanted a, a, a decent set of kickstart onto each board to make it easy to test. So I'll put the ones off the other board. So that one is the one for this side. I'm so pleased when I finish these two. I'm very close now. We've just got that new uh, serial, uh, you know, not serial, well, serial, yeah, shift register issue. So with a mouse on the A board, the A hole board. I'm sure it'll give me something else to play with after that, that board. It's, it's one of those boards, so you fix everything and then something else starts breaking or stops working. Okay. Switch the light switch a sec, hang on. Right, so let's wheel back over there. I think that's pretty clean. I'm not going to get that much cleaner. It's okay, I think. It's good. So let's wheel back over there and let's time now. Let's see if this now falls in line with what the other one was doing, which is approximately 16 seconds or so, wasn't it? I think. It was something like that. I'm sure we can look back and time it. The main thing is it shouldn't be 30 odd seconds upwards like that other one was. The other one. Uh, so we've got no drives, got power, hang on. Video. So I'll point you at the screen before I switch it on. So I realise you can't really see the top of the screen while that. 
So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. What is going on? This still isn't working. It's now <laughs> different to what we're expecting. There you go. So the kickstart ROMs have got nothing to do with it. The kickstart ROMs have got nothing to do with it. There is an extended delay still on this board. <sighs> yeah, it's still at 30 odd seconds, isn't it? Like 40 seconds or 45, 50 seconds. That is really weird. That is really weird. Thanks for the suggestions on that though, guys, about the kickstart ROMs. But I think we've, uh, well, we've just proven there that the timing of the kickstart roms you know the pole and that they you know it applies there it's not the issue it is something to do with the either the gals the difference in the gals um it could be that original hct one that's on there should we swap that i don't think so though because the board works doesn't it, it boots everything let's just try out let's just stick id back on here yeah, I'm reluctant to because I have no, this board has had no issues. This one's not the one that's played up with IDE yet, uh, you know, since we've been testing here. So I have every confidence that this one is, uh, is well behaved. Hence why it's, it's got a one there, not on A for A hole. Let's uh, switch it on again. Yeah, it's booting already. That's flashing away there. Give it a second or so. You always get a pause there before it sort of starts its. Oh, hang on. Why is this now not booing? <laughs> uh, I don't like this. Uh, is this one now turned into an A-hole as well? Sorry, I know the camera's at a crazy angle there. It's just to support the crazy behaviour. Uh, it's flashing there, look. Yeah, I know it's booting. I think the compact flash card just need reseating, uh, as you saw. Just reseated and it's uh, start booting up. So, uh, I don't know. It's one of these things I could spend uh, hours, hang on, that's, that's just memory, that's all right, ignore that. Yeah, I could spend hours and hours and hours going around in circles with this, couldn't I? I could swap out that other chip, but I don't see the mileage in doing that. I don't think, because it is booting, it does work. Um, anyway, post me what your thoughts are. What do you think? Do you think it's a... Uh, because uh, 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 D0 and D1 that normally get terminated to go through this one. And this is the original one that's on the... That one's a replacement one we just fitted on this. So uh, just to be consistent, make sure it's got HCTs on it. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, the main thing of this video, I am happy that that board is not giving up after six seconds. Because that was the one that was occasionally... Uh, well, I can't say occasionally, only one time there. I failed to see the drive, didn't it, when it was super hot. We can leave that there. I'll just go and finish cleaning up the other one, catch up with the chat, and then I might go get some lunch or something. And uh, perhaps catch up uh, later, if I can think of something else to share this afternoon. Uh, Stephen Leary, Terrell, are ready for another A4? board uh, yeah i'm not sure i want to work on another 8000 board just a uh, 4000 board just at the moment these have taken so much time uh someone said it's a bug fix from three not stephen um i had one of the guinness one guinness last night got a headache <laughs> sorry hi, hi electron ash good to see you again mike simcox you know uh because you came on six one of these business where the wife's toothbrush comes out uh yeah back in the hd didn't manage to spin up in time you had to reset the Amiga. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's why it's important you've got a, a reasonable pole time there. And that's one of my thoughts with that uh, six second, you know, the A-hole board. When it was six seconds there, I was like, I don't like that. I don't like the fact it's only waiting six seconds. Because I knew what would happen if, you know, at some point I stick an ID on there, an ID drive rather than a compact flash car, and it won't detect it. Um, and I happen to think that that's probably why the compact flash wasn't even being detected at one point. When it was, you know, when we got super hot in here, it's not waiting very long. You know, it's not giving the drive long enough to initialize itself. It's not gonna, it's not gonna find a drive. It's gonna give up. Was this with Kickstart swapped? Yes, Electronash, it was. I swapped. Um, you can see the ROMs. Uh, sorry, I have to move the camera up a little bit. You can see the the ROMs that were on there. It was using uh, 3.1 before. I took them off and we put three on from the other board. 
So, uh, yeah. Still strange. You can even shove a logic analyzer on the IDE port. Uh, I can do any of these tests using, without using oscilloscope. Yeah, it's true. It's probably the best way of working it out. Um, once powered up, what happens when you just reset? Um, super question. I've got a reset button or anything at the moment. That's the problem. Um, I have to go and get the keyboard adapter and stuff and go and get my PS2 keyboard because I'm going to try and reboot with the keyboard. I guess I could just pull the reset line low, but um, I might end up uh, you know, causing some damage doing that, showing something low. 245 SSI 8 bit IDE data bus is 16 bit. Someone said, hang on, I'm missing the point there. Hang on. Aren't these for low and high back? Yes, they are. Yeah. As far as I understand, yeah, they are. Someone said, why the hell does it have two, four, five chips in parallel? Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, two, four, five is an 8-bit. IDE date bus is 16-bit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's correct. Uh, and that was my point, actually, on the other board. Uh, put this one back down here, just for purposes of pointing at me with those ROMs before I bend the legs on them. Uh, I'll get them back on this board, actually. Um... Yeah, just to clarify, on the other board, the chip here is an original chip that was on these 4,000 boards. The one there is the one that I swapped on the other board. This chip here is where D0 and D1 go to. Um, in fact, if I've got my meter, let me just test. Put the meter on continuity test, I can show you that. That's why I'm questioning on my other board, maybe... Um, well, I don't know actually. Yeah, maybe the chip on the other board needs to be swapped as well. Um, but if we measure from, I think it's uh, is it those pins there? It's going to be one of these here. There it is. Third one down. So that's one data bit, and then the other one is the one next to it, which is yeah that one there. So yeah, D zero and D one go through this, but you know some of the upper data bits there are going to go through this one. Because um, I think it is, is it 16 bit? I think it is 16 bit. If it's not, some of the control signals and things will go through that. But uh, anyway, um, so I'm thinking this is the one that actually I need to just uh, finish cleaning this up now, don't I? The other one's had its little clean the bush there. Let's just do this one as well. Where's my toothbrush gone? Oh, it's here. Oh, I'm dripping it everywhere, look. Yeah, this is the one that I've both done, isn't it? I think. Maybe I've just cleaned this and I'm doubling up here, honestly, losing track of what I've been doing. Anyway, that'll do. I think that's pretty clean. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, get some lunch, I think. You got any questions or anything uh, before I go? I think on the last stream, someone asked me uh, to talk about my job, what my current job is. Well, my current job at the moment, I'm a, an IT manager. Uh, I've, yeah, I've gone up in the world, haven't I? It's like what used to be just a scene around this programme, and now I'm an IT manager. Uh, so I work for a friend It's just part-time, but at the moment I'm furloughed because um, that company's had to sort of cease trading. It, you know, we can't get business because people are all in lockdown, and uh, it's a recruitment agency. And while people are in lockdown, they can't start new jobs, even though there's lots and lots of jobs available at the moment. Um, yeah, people can't interview. Uh, they need to do face-to-face -face things, need, you know, face-to-face -face training. Um, yeah, everyone's in lockdown. So, yeah, the business is, is, is locked down as well. It's in furlough. Um, so for the next six or seven weeks now, um, yeah, you can expect more streams because I ain't got anything else to do just now. 
Um, it does, of course, mean I'm on an 80% pay as well. I've had a 20% pay cut while all this is going on. And it's, it's a bit nerve-wracking because I don't really know what's going to happen at the end of this. And we're going to be faced with six months of this. Because if uh, things go on for six months, and you know, it's going to destroy the economy, isn't it? Anyway, uh, so what do I do as an IT manager? Well, um, software um, with, used within that recruitment organisation, ultimately I developed it actually years ago in my spare time. So I'm uh, supporting that, developing that, redeveloping a new version of it, I'm due to start version two uh, in the latest technologies, because it was all written in Delphi. Developed it in Delphi. Um, SQL Server backend database. Got a few different databases there for a few different things. Uh, there's a KPI uh, system, you know, tracking performance and things like that. Um, so I'm responsible for all of that. I did some changes to that over the last few months, some changes to the main uh, recruitment uh, database system there. Um, and all sorts of bits and pieces. So, uh, my boss has been uh, setting up VPN. He's quite tech savvy himself, which really helps actually. But that's from speaking to me over the years. I've pointed him in the right direction, so he's got to speed on various things. He's always previously done the IT side himself, so he's pretty tech savvy, but he set up the VPN uh, according to some advice I gave him a number of years ago. And um, with everything been going on, that's really come to uh, fruition, if you like, the VPN side of things, because he's been able to migrate everybody to being home-based. So everyone's took their computers home and helped him set up the VPN, solve some VPN issues with that. There were numerous issues, actually. Um, just because uh, he's got a variety of PC builds, actually. They're not all exactly the same. So that was a bit of a, a challenge. Let's just get those rooms back in there. Um, but yeah, so I'm prim primarily my title is, like I say, an IT manager. But it's everything to do with uh, IT, really. I've, you know, network issues and the point of contact, database, software changes, uh, anything really. I recently set up some uh, UPSs with him and it's configured all the software for those to gracefully power the databases and things down should the power uh, go out. Any questions before I go guys? Uh, I may be back later on like I say I just need to get some lunch and stuff and I'll have a think see what else I've got that might be worthy of showing. If not uh, I'll be back uh, in a day or two probably. Well, someone doing PC himself, I think you know he's a true gaming lover. With the apnea, do you have a tight chesting when you woke up? Headaches, depression, and feeling like you have mild hangover all day? That sounds like me all the time, actually. That's how I feel with uh, chronic fatigue and multiple chemical sensitivity. Gadget, does your wife complain about how her toothbrush tastes? <laughs> yeah, I, you know I'm always kidding, it's not her toothbrush, it's an old one. I think it may be her old toothbrush, actually. Uh, people on Twitter are trying to give Boris the clap. Oh, jeez, they lol. He's trying to kill me. <coughs> I'm starting with a cough now. That's not good. So let's run a share. £280 on AliExpress. I'm not sure what. <laughs> what was 208 pounds of AliExpress? Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, let's put you back in, mate. Yeah, thank you very much for joining this morning. Uh, like I say, I might be back this afternoon. I'll perhaps post on Twitter if I'm going to do before before I do a stream. Uh, if not, I'll, again, I'll post on Twitter to say I don't think I'm going to do another one today. I'll perhaps be back tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to get some lunch. Take care. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Thanks for the, the donations as well. Thanks for all the hints and tips and advice within this video. Uh, I think we achieved something today. Uh, yeah, I think we did. <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys. See you later. Bye.